Hi, my name is Katie Morris and I teach pre-K through 12 art at Jackson Heights Schools, which is a small district just north of Holton. Um, today I'm going to show you the process that I use to do a speed painting challenge. I do this every year with my intro class in high school because I think it's a good way to teach them about blending colors um, and how to loosen up. That's the biggest thing for me. Students tend to want to be perfect when they paint and that can make painting projects take a really, really long time. So I like to do this just to try to encourage them to you know, adjust if they make mistakes and help them practice some of those techniques. So I'm gonna start and I'm gonna kind of explain the rules that I give my students for this. And I'm gonna step you through what I'm doing. I also have some time-lapse videos that I'll put in at the end um, that shows it faster. Now, I could obviously do this even faster if I wasn't trying to think and talk at the same time, so I encourage students to um, not talk a ton when they're doing this. So anyway, I just use construction paper. I have a bunch of gray construction paper that wasn't really getting used, so it's great because we're gonna paint and cover up all of that gray. Um, I have some big pieces of copy paper that was donated. So I just started using that as a messy mat and then taping it down so I'll have a nice clean margin at the end. Um, it also helps cut back on the cleanup time because when you're doing this and moving quickly and trying to get all the way to the edge, it tends to get a lot of paint on the table if you don't have um, something behind it. Okay, so I have that taped down. Um, since I usually do this in the fall, one of my favorite subjects to use for the painting are these little ornamental gourds. I just bought three bags of them this morning with different, um, different varieties, but I kind of like this one, so I'm gonna start with it. So I'm gonna set it where I can see it. And then I also have the colors of primaries and neutrals. You could just do red, yellow, and blue. Um, I also give the students magenta and cyan, and I talk about how there's kind of the traditional primaries and then the new primaries and how you're able to get a different range of colors. So I give them those options and we just use temper paint for this since it's cheaper than acrylic and easy to wash. Um, but you could definitely do it with, with acrylic if you wanted to. So I, have my setup here. Um, I would start by telling students the rules that number one, you can't draw first. You're gonna start directly with the paint on the paper. Uh, two, primary colors. So you have to mix the colors you wanna use. And three, you have to paint all the way to the edge. Four, you can't clean your brush with water. So you can either learn to blend it out or you can use a paper towel and kind of clean your brush in there. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna start with yellow and I'm gonna start kind of trying to get my the main shape of my gourd. And I'm gonna start mixing in some red. I also encourage the students not to mix on their palette um, because once again, that tends to feed into the need for perfection. They wanna mix a big batch of a color or just say, I'm painting a pumpkin and it's orange, so I'm gonna mix all my red and yellow and make orange. I want them to learn to adjust. So right now I've got a little bit more red in there than I'd want, so I'm gonna take some white and just start kind of putting it on there. Tell the students this is not a good time to skimp on paint. You wanna get enough that you have something to blend because you want the paint to still be wet. So I have, I'm getting, happier with this now. Kind of like starting to get the main shape. Now I want to start putting in some texture. So I have these lovely gourds with really cool warts on them. That's my favorite kind. And I'm gonna put in the stem, which I will define a little bit more later. Okay, and then the other thing I like to show them is Scraffito. So I'm gonna use my paintbrush handle. Scraffito means to scratch into. And I think this is a really fun way on a playful style of painting to kind of get some of the that texture in there. So I'm 
I'm gonna dab over here. Whoops, forgot I had red on there instead of yellow. That's all right. We're going with it. That's what this is all about, learning to be flexible. It doesn't look exactly like this, Gord. No, that's okay. All right, so yeah, if you make a mistake, you just paint over it. Paint still wet, not a problem. Okay, I'm gonna get some of this paint off, so I'm just gonna start kind of filling in my background a little bit. I don't know what color this is gonna end up. We'll see. Okay, I wanna get a tiny bit of blue. Oh, I typically have students use one brush as well, and I've got a pretty good sized one here. Um, you can give them smaller brushes if you want to, but I wouldn't let them have a teeny tiny brush for this because back to that perfectionism, they'll take forever and try to get everything perfect. I'm gonna do my angles there for the stem. Okay, so I wanna start putting in some shadow. So I'm gonna get some of my blue. And when you do the background, that's a great time to kind of define your shape a little bit more. So you can get enough brush on there, or enough <laughs> enough paint on your brush, that as you go around, you it's not gonna be dry. You don't want a dry brush when you're trying to define something. So I'm gonna get some more. I'm gonna kind of fade that out. I think I'm gonna get some white and I'm gonna just kind of start mixing that in. We'll see what happens with this background. Big fan of using white in the background of these because it kind of like picks up a little bit of all the other colors that were left behind or left on your brush. You have to be kind of kind of loose and just go with it. I bet I could do one of these in like two or three minutes if I wasn't trying to talk while I was doing it. <laughs> We also, we did this just today in my uh, graphic design classes and we had some good, good little discussions about, hopefully you can't hear that kid yelling out my window. We had some good discussions um, about contrast. Like I, we had some kids that were getting everything really, really dark. So I said, if you have the same value, the same amount of light and dark in your background as you do on your focal point, you may want to add some more lightness or some more darkness somewhere. So I'm getting closer. I'll hold this up for you. Okay. I think I want to get a little bit more contrast. I want to mix in maybe a little bit of red over on the far side of this gourd. And I want to get my stem kind of straightened out. So I can come back and I can add more shadows. Maybe a little bit more yellow here. You can adjust your edges. Like I realized that was a little bit too skinny. It needed to be more round. You just add some more paint. Oh, there's some green. Blend it in. Or don't blend it. Let those colors show through. Either way is fine. Because there's more than one right way to do this. Okay, so I'm going to come here. And give it some more bumps. There's a nice big one right there. Sometimes I even just do some marks in my background because I just really like the look of it. Um, you don't even have to give students black if you don't want to. I don't tend to use it very much when I do this because you know that black can kind of take over so it's good to use for adding contrast but you probably don't want to start with that um, just because it's hard to go back the other direction. All right, so there's my quick little speed painting demo. Um, here's another one that I did earlier today and the masking tape peels off really nicely. I haven't had trouble with it ripping, ripping my construction paper or anything. So then you are left with some fun paintings. I tell the students these aren't all going to turn out as masterpieces and that's okay because you're learning from the experience of doing it. Um, every time I do it, I learn a little something like, oh, I shouldn't have done it in this order. I should have done this first. That's, that's what we're after, not perfection. We're looking for 
process over perfection. So here's one from earlier today, my nice clean margins. Here's one I did really quick because a student was having trouble building form. So I just did like a two minute example to show them. Um, but yeah, it's been a fun process and I had students today who did it last year, so they aren't required to do the same same assignments again. They're like, can I do the speed painting? Yes, absolutely, because it's fun and helps you loosen up. So hopefully you will get something out of this. Um, give it a try yourself. It is pretty fun. It's a great way to use up leftover paint as well. If you have a uh, paint that you can't get back in the bottle for another class. so. Yeah, we'll continue with the time-lapse videos so you can see me doing this process with some other subjects. So here's a couple thoughts about doing this challenge in the time of COVID. In previous years, I would just put out a couple trays of paint per table and the students would share that. But since everybody's trying to avoid shared supplies this year, I gave each student their own tray of paint. Um, I save foam meat trays since they can't be recycled and I wash them up really good and take those to school. We're able to use them for pretty much the whole school year. But I had plenty to give each student their own. And I tried to have the paint uh, started before they came into class, you know, when the previous class was cleaning up. If I was able to, I would start getting it ready. If not, as the students were turning in the previous day's work or getting their paint brushes, I would go ahead, <laughs> I would go ahead and get the paint prepared since they all need the same colors to start with. So meat trays are good. Um, I've used lids from ice cream buckets before that people had donated. And I've even used magazines where you can just, Fult Miles is adding to my painting right now, where I would just uh, pull off the top pages that it soaked through and throw those away to be able to get fresh paint for the next class. So there's some solutions that you can try to make it easier to give each student their own paint.
Okay, so I just tried following the rules of the speed painting challenge, only using acrylic paint on canvas because that's what I had at home. Um, and I will say it did not work quite as well as it did with tempera because the paint that I had was heavy body. So it wasn't quite as fluid and without trying to use water, um, it went on just a lot thicker and it was also drying slower. So it ended up taking me about 10 minutes and not real wild with what I got. Um, so if you wanted to do something similar using acrylic, I would probably loosen up and let the students um, use water if they need to thin out their paint um, and maybe not push them to do it super fast. You could do like one class period instead of, you know, aiming for 10 or 15 minutes um, like I typically do when I use it with temper with my high school students. Um, so I do this every year with my introductory class called graphic design at my school, but it's kind of like an art one with graphic design mixed in there. Um, so I've got a lot of underclassmen, some upperclassmen in there. Um, I have also done it though with middle school and even upper elementary where I just tell them the rules, but they have, you know, the 20 to 30 minute class period after we get things passed out. They have all of that time to work on it. So it does work with upper elementary and middle school too. It's just to kind of help them loosen up and, um, learn to blend and mix colors and practice all of those skills. So you definitely could do it with other materials, other um, other mediums if you wanted to, but if you're trying to do it quickly, I would suggest that you stick with tempera. Um, so I hope that you guys get a chance to give this a try and I'd love to see what you make. If you have some extra time before the next workshop starts, you could go ahead and pull out paint and do it now. Um, or you can always share pictures later so we can kind of see what you came up with because I'm sure that art teachers will come up with some really cool stuff. So let me know if I can help you with any questions um, about this process and enjoy the rest of your conference.